A heartbreaking tragedy. One firefighter says, is that a body? A five-year-old boy killed in a fiery car crash. There was, in fact, a small body in the back of the car, which was Daniel. His mother badly burned. She's suffering from burns over 35 to 40 percent of her body. Fire investigators sift through the charred wreckage. There's just something odd about it. And uncover a dark secret buried in the back seat. It was a premeditated, horrific crime on one of the most vulnerable among us, a five-year-old little boy. Happy birthday to you. No one ever thought this would be Daniel Dana's last birthday. Beautiful video of Daniel at his fifth birthday party, surrounded by his father and a grandmother and an aunt. Daniel was a bright, curious, soon-to-be first grader who loved karate and playing his guitar. You can see the love, you can see the happiness, and you can see Daniel's beautiful smile and face. Daniel was a beautiful child who was loved. The only thing that made the little five-year-old sad, his parents' constant fighting. They met in Iran, got married, and um, shortly thereafter, he brought her to the United States. I think it was challenging for the marriage. Attorney Mary Beth Ayers says Nargis Shafarad and Hamid Dana's marriage was doomed from the beginning. They're actually related. Um, they're first cousins, but not biologically. She was adopted. Court records show the Iranian immigrants had filed restraining orders against each other. Prosecutor Steve Chaikin says there were even allegations of abuse. There was a lot of uh, going back and forth with arguing, text messages. Their bitter divorce was followed by an even nastier custody battle over little Daniel. Ayers says Nargis was jealous over a young nanny Hamid had hired and was livid when Daniel spent time with them. It seems like at this point she was willing to do anything and to go to any length to make sure that child would not spend time with his father. Yes, and, um, and I think the way she saw the child was kind of spoils of the custody war. Hamid in turn hired a private investigator to prove Nargis was an unfit mother. He wanted custody and it was horrible. They were using Daniel as a pawn. The day before the final hearing to determine which parent would win primary custody of Daniel, Nargis asked a friend to borrow his car and drive to Daniel's school in Gaithersburg, Maryland. Talk to me exactly about what happened. It was the last day of school um, and she picked up Daniel. She took him to a lot of different restaurants um, and then just started to drive around. Sometime around 3 a.m., Nargis decides to drive Daniel to Ocean City, Maryland, about four hours away for a spontaneous beach trip. But they never make it. On a dark, twisting suburban road, Nargis loses control of the car, barrels over a concrete median, and the car explodes into a fireball. In the distance, I saw a vehicle that was like on fire. So, you saw the actual vehicle yeah. on fire. Paramedic R.G. Kepke just happened to be returning from another call and rushed to the scene. What's the first thing you did when you actually got out to the vehicle? Um, I asked the bystanders outside if there was anybody in the car. Some of the bystanders said there was an individual on the ground on the other side of the car. It's Nargis face down on the asphalt, writhing in pain. Was she badly burned? Some of her clothes were burnt off and she had some dark color skin going on so she was talking she was screaming and I asked her if there was anybody else in the car and she said her son was in the car but the car was still on fire the desperate bomb pleads for Kepke to save her only son but all four of the car doors are locked the whole inside was covered with smoke all the windows were dark I was able to bust out a window open some doors I didn't see anything except like a bunch of blankets on the floorboard and I didn't see a child's car seat or anything in the back seat. Moments later, a Montgomery County fire engine arrives and firemen extinguish the flames, but there's no sign of Daniel. What did you do at that point? Um, I still asked if she had her son in there and she said yes. So I didn't know if she was like out of her mind, like, you know, maybe she thought he was there, but he wasn't. Nargis is rushed to a burn trauma center in grave condition. Firefighters then begin digging through the still smoldering car. They find heartbreak. What did you discover? The firefighters discovered a body in the back seat. Uh, it looked like we covered up by blankets. 
Did you actually see Daniel in the back seat? I saw part of him. Daniel is burned beyond recognition. But it's where his little body is found that raises eyebrows. It wasn't too fair, I was wrapped up and, and pushed down in the back seat. It wasn't in the car seat that she started going, okay, this isn't right. Fire investigator Joel Shackett and a crash reconstruction team are called in to determine how the car caught fire and more importantly, how little Daniel died. Was the fire pretty significant? To the interior of the car, yes. Police photos reveal the car's badly charred interior, but oddly, there's little damage of any kind to the outside of the car. It just didn't seem to be adding up. It, for something that was had that much action, you'd think that it would be a very high-speed collision. And even stranger, the car's fuel tank was completely intact. There was nothing wrong with the vehicle. There were no leaks. There was nothing that was broken during the collision. Fuel tank, fuel pump, fuel lines. If there was no damage to the fuel tank, then what would explain this? Several people had said that they smelled something that they believed was gasoline. Up next, was Daniel's death a tragic accident or a twisted cover-up? What did he do that was so bad? So bad that he had to be murdered. And set on fire. When you're there and you see this little body in the you. back. It crushes you. you. You just can't understand it. But we have a job to do. We have to find out what caused this fire. <laughs>